Hey guys, what's going on today? I want to talk about a champion who I just pulled during the 2X event that we had a few days ago. And I want to say this champion is one of the few champions who I pull and quite literally becomes an account changer for me, okay? When I pulled Kaimar, he was an account changer. Completely changed up so many different areas of the game for me. But everybody knows Kaimar is like that, right? He is such a good champion. Rio, when I pulled her, I didn't realize she was going to be as good as she is. But honestly, this champion has changed up or gave given me so many more options in the arena on teams I can hit. Hedgy Kaimar, no problem. Hedgy Kaimar, no problem. Hedgy by himself, no problem. Kaimar, fast Kaimar teams, no problem. She's opened up so many different doors and I wanna show you guys, basically what I wanna do in this video is I wanna go over Rio's skills. I tried doing this video like probably 14 times now. I've hit record so many times. I've literally done it so many times sitting down that I'm like, my brain's just not working sitting down. So I'm gonna have to stand up, okay? So I'm standing up and we're hopefully going to get this done the first time while standing up. So let's go over some Rio and then we're going to jump into some arena. I'm going to show you guys some different teams you can go with. So I'm going to show you some teams that maybe like a little bit OP, a little bit pay to win teams. And then I'm going to jump into some teams that hopefully you guys have some champions who are a little more accessible. But let's say she was like one of your very first champions. I want to go over some ideas and like concepts that you can use to build a team around Rio. That makes sense, even if you don't have any other legendary besides Rio. Now, obviously, you need some other champions and you can't make all the strategies work if you don't have the right pieces. Right. So hopefully this will be beneficial to you guys for sure. Hopefully this will be beneficial to you guys. And yeah, let's get into it. So first off, you'll notice 319 speed. The teams I'm running her with, she is my fastest champion on the team. I have her accuracy at 311. This accuracy banner, it just so happened to have my best speed rolls. I do think her accuracy is very, very important, but to be honest, I value her being the fastest on my team and being relatively fast, right? More than I value accuracy. Her A2 ability is very, very impactful. We'll get into that in just a second, but her role that the speed lends itself to is so much more valuable. Um, her HP for me is tuned very specifically. I'll, I'll go over that once we get into like kind of team compositions that our user in, but this is the build that I have her in and I'm really enjoying this. Okay. She's using my teams to counter Hegemons, to counter Kaimar, to counter Hegemon plus Kaimar. Honestly, any champion who's going to debuff my team, Tormund, doesn't matter. Okay. Her block debuffs from her A3 ability is going to make debuffs irrelevant. Okay. Now this right here is where she really, really shines when receiving any debuffs instantly transfers them from this champion to the attacker. Now there's two champions who's kind of problematic for her. Okay. So if you're running into Rio in the arena and she's really annoying you two champions, okay. Um, Chris, apparently his provoke, you can't transfer and don't say provoke can't be transferred because I'm like 99% sure I had a hegemon against me wearing a taunting set and he applied the provoke and it transferred perfectly fine. So for whatever reason, I mean, doesn't need a transfer. I don't know if it went back to him, but I know it wasn't on my Rio. I don't know exactly what happened, but I almost recall that. And I, I don't daydream about weird things like that happening. At least I don't think. So with Chris, the provoke doesn't transfer. Okay. So he can CC Rio and I've heard Siffy can sleep Rio and it actually does stay applied to her. I don't know if that's true or not, but this ability is so good. Okay. Now, if you're running Rio in this speed set against Sif or Kaimar plus Hegemon, it's not going to work because what happens is Hegemon applies his decrease cool or block cooldowns, decrease attack. Okay. And then she's going to reflect those back to the Hegemon. Well, then Kaimar is going to sleep. This passives on cooldown and your champions asleep. Now there is a way to prevent that from happening. If you run an immunity set on your Rio, then when the enemy Hegemon tries to apply the decrease, the block cooldown plus the decrease attack, your Rio is going to block it because of the block debuffs. And then she's going to be able to reflect the Kaimar sleep whenever he uses that on her. Now, I do run Necrit with her to make that work out perfectly, but I'm not going to go over that just yet. I'm not going to get too in depth with that. We'll go over in like the specific team builds and the strategy once I get into the arena and we start doing that. But her A3 ability removes all debuffs from all allies, places block debuffs for two turns, heals all allies by 35% of their max HP, which is huge. Big, big book value here. Three turn cooldown reduction. I don't have her booked. I don't need her booked. I'm going to book her when CVC comes, but I'm not I'm in no rush. Okay. She's doing her job perfectly fine with no books whatsoever. And then she heals them by a further 5% for each debuff removed from them. Not a huge deal when you're doing the strategy that I'm doing, because typically 
everyone on the team is pretty close to full HP, except for against Nuke Hegemon. Against Nuke Hegemon, if he applies the debuffs, I guess that does have some value. Now, this ability right here is very, very good. Honestly, it hits fairly hard. Um, but if you don't have accuracy, she's not going to land it. Places stun debuff on a target enemy for one turn, as well as a bunch of other debuffs, okay? Obviously, looking at this, stun, not going to be applied to the clan boss. HP burn, decreased defense, weaken, decreased attack, decreased crit rate. All good clan boss debuffs, okay? Run her with a vizier. You keep all these debuffs up all the time. It's going to be booked down to a three-turn cooldown. Boom, you got your debuff champion right here. Such a good a2 ability obviously if you're running her in dungeons if you're running her in clan boss just get her fast fast enough maybe 200 speed wherever your account's at just make her fast make her accurate make her tanky and she will do so good okay obviously if you make her really fast she has this ability right here get it fully booked down three turn cooldown she's going to be healing a crazy amount from these two right here well the the base heal plus this 10 percent, another 10 percent low cooldown it's going to be a such such a good ability okay a1 ability attacks one enemy Places 15% continuous heal buff on the ally with the lowest HP for one turn. Also places 7.5% continuous heal buff on all allies with 30% HP or less for one turn. So basically, if you're just up and coming in the game, maybe don't build her for the arena, okay? The build that I'm showing today and the masteries and everything like that is going to be more specific if you only want her in the arena. But if you're just coming up, she's such a good progression champion, okay? Amazing support, amazing survivability. Very good debuffs on her A2 ability. Single target, very good against the clan boss, very good against singling out waves in dungeons or whatever, but just overall, very, very solid kit. Now, her masteries, let's jump into these, okay? You'll notice that I'm missing a few of these on the bottom, okay? I also have Eagle Eye taken. There's a reason for all this, okay? So Eagle Eye, obviously giving her more accuracy. I don't have Cycler Revenge. You may think, okay, well, if you want her to go the fastest and you are expecting her to get hit, wouldn't you want Cycler Revenge? Well, the issue with that arises if, let's say, my Rio and my Kaimar are speed tuned very well right now, okay? So right now, Rio is sitting at 319 speed. Prince Kaimar is sitting at 317 speed, okay? So there's not really much separating, okay? The enemy has a Hegemon. He hits me. Rio procs her cycle of revenge, which if, if she had it, let's, let's play hypotheticals here. Pretend she actually had this. Um, and it has a 50% chance of an increase in turn meter, about 15%, when an ally is attacked with a critical hit. So Hegemon did that. Rio and Kaimor, let's say they both had Cycle Revenge, okay? But say Rio is the only one who actually procced that 50% chance, okay? So now their small speed gap of, what, two speed? Rio boosts that up, so now she's way up here. Kaimor's way down here, okay? The enemy has a Hegemon and a Kaimor to go. Okay, so the Hedgy does his stuff. Rio gets boosted. She gets boosted so much she's going before the enemy's Kaimar. She takes her turn, and then I'm in a weird spot, okay? Because now I have to take her turn. I can cleanse everybody, but literally the enemy's Kaimar is going to cut right in between. He's going to strip and sleep my entire team. Rio's useless. Kaimar can't do anything because he's asleep, and then I get destroyed. Whereas if neither one of them have Cycle of Revenge, I don't have to worry about their speed tune getting really messed up. And all I have to make sure is that their speeds are close enough together that nine times out of 10, people aren't going to cut in on them, okay? Now, there are situations where Hegemons will use their A1 ability. It'll target Rio automatically, and that is a pain. That is a trouble, but you can play around that. It does mess up the speed tune, but I don't go any speed manipulating things like Cycle of Revenge or Divine or Timely Intervention, okay? I don't take either one of those abilities. Now, even on Arbiter, okay? So if I bring Arbiter, if I bring Lissandra, this is a, an ability that if you were going against a typical Hegemon counter team, if you were using a typical Hegemon counter team, this might make sense. Now, I don't want this on my team because I don't use Rio with Timely Intervention. She gets more value from Eagle Eye with the extra accuracy, at least in my opinion. I'm finding more value with that, especially since most of the time I'm going, I don't plan on my champions dropping below 25% HP. A few times against Nuke Hegemons they do, but typically they don't. So my Arbiter, I don't want her having this either, because same thing. This Arbiter right here is speed tuned to be very close with my Rio, which I got to double check to make sure, because you have to keep in mind the base speed does get boosted up from the speed aura. So the 30% speed aura, if Arbiter was 319 and Rio was 319, it may... It would definitely Arbiter would go first, but I, got, I have to see what I can work with. I may have to lower her speed a little bit. I haven't tested Arbiter too much, but Lysandra I have, okay? She works very, very well. So I'm going to jump into the arena. Uh, we're about nine minutes into this video. Um, so hopefully you guys got a base understanding of Rio. Basically from here on out, 
I just want to jump in the arena, go over some different team comps that I can go against and kind of like the strategy and like the team picking that I like to choose. Okay. Now, basically this team right here was a team that I heard a lot of people saying that Rio cannot counter Hedgy plus Kaimar. And there's two different ways. Okay. You can throw her in immunity gear. She can counter it, or you can throw a Necrit. This is the better option. Now, if you guys use Necrit, this will apply to you. If you don't, obviously, hopefully you pull him. He's a very good champion, but this won't apply to you right now. When you use Necrit, he shields the person with the highest or the lowest max HP. So Rio has 41,000 HP. Now, if you bring a typical champion like Leoris, he's sitting at, actually for him, I have him a little bit higher HP, but your typical nuker is not going to have that much HP, okay? Your typical nuker is going to have less HP than Rio. It's going to be a little difficult to tune him, right? But if you take this champion right here, Magnar, wherever he's at, and throw him in here, Rio's never going to have more HP than Magnar. So in this situation, all you need to make sure is that whoever you're using up here, whether it's Arbiter, whether it's Lysandra, whether it's Kaimar, whoever it may be, because you're going to want to make sure you cut in after the enemy team goes. You want to make sure you cut in and capitalize on that Rio cleansing everybody. You want to make sure that obviously Rio still has the lowest HP. My Kaimar is sitting at 41.8. So 41,810. She's at 41,151. So he's just barely above, but he is above. So we jump into this match. And what's going to happen is Hegemon's going to do his AoE. May do some damage. We'll see. But Necrit's there to protect. He's wearing a shield set. Now we got the Terminator reduction the A1 from the Hegemon. This may screw things up, but it doesn't. Kaimar slept or stripped and then slept, which if if we uh, didn't have Necrit in here, that would be terrible. But since we have Necrit, not a big deal. Since these two are very, very close in speed tune, this works out perfectly. Obviously, if they're running a resistance team, that may be a problem. Typically, with Necrit, uses A2 here. He gets an extra turn. I'm not worried about him getting the extra turn, just extra animation time. So forget all that. We're going to go ahead and keep going. Um, Magnar is going to smack so hard with his A2 ability, I hope. Let's hope this works out just as we plan it to. And then this is where, this is where you'd flex Rio's A2 ability. Oh, let's hope there's, okay, so not high resist. Boom. Not only does she cleanse your team, does she, she also CCs with such good debuffs plus a stun, okay? Works out so good against Siffy's. Now, granted, well, Siffy's, Duchess, anybody who can res, it works out so good. Now, the obvious issue is if they're running resistance, really if they're running any resistance whatsoever, most of the time your best speed gear isn't also going to happen to have really good accuracy stats on it. But if it does, that works out amazing. Okay. Now, some other teams I want to give you an example of this one right here may be a problem. Okay. So it's going to be a fast Arbiter, Hedgy, and this Warlord's probably going to be pretty fast. Now, against this kind of team, what I would want to do is run a Molly. She's going to give a boost in turn meter whenever she gets hit. Fills a turn meter of all allies by 15% when this champion is hit. So 15% turn meter boost. This is why you want to make sure you have a fairly fast champion up here. Now, typically, I would use Kaimar, but for the sake of this video, I'm not going to use him, okay? I'm going to use my Arbiter instead. Remember, she's the Arbiter with 317 speed. I hope that whenever I get hit, that I have this speed tune worked out perfectly fine. And hopefully, well, it doesn't actually work out perfectly fine because, unfortunately, he used his A1 ability, which most Hedgies who are um, programmed correctly with their AI, a lot of them do use their A1 ability first. Not a huge deal. Let's we'll keep going on, okay? Here's an example right here. Um, Hegemon, Kaimar. Now, Hegemon plus Kaimar. Remember, I need Necrit or an immunity set on Rio. Since I don't have an immunity set on Rio, I'm going to throw Necrit in here. But since I already did an example with that, we're going to keep going and looking for a different team. Um, this one is just a Kaimar, not Kaimar plus Hedgy. So just a Kaimar and two Rotos. So two Rotos, I know, okay, I'm going to need to double hit them at least because if I hit them with a huge single target hit, all they're going to do it's just counterattack me. It's going to be a bad day. Now, if I sleep Rotos, they're just going to wake up. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take a, because I mean, because Siffy's here, so she's going to cleanse them. That's super annoying. So what I'm going to do instead is bring a Lysandra, who's going to reduce their turn meter. I could also bring an Arbiter, who's going to boost my turn meter. Um, Molly's not going to provoke. It's not going to do anything huge, ben huge benefit. It's not gonna really going to give me any benefits. Let's get the words out here, Ty. All right. It's not going to give me any huge benefits to bring Molly for the provoke. The turn meter increase could be very nice. I doubt these Rotoses are very, very fast. Typically, Rotos in teams like this are built fairly slow. So to be honest, I could probably just go a Madam Saris. Now, this may not work out perfectly. Don't get me wrong. I'm not a professional with this team yet, but I got a feeling this should work out perfectly fine. Rio cleanses all this stuff. Lysandra's going to 
make the turn meters look more appropriate. Madame Saris is going to strip everybody. Magnar is hopefully going to get a turn here because, I mean, Lysandra is so good. Now, everybody's magic affinity, basically. And then there we go. All right. So this Rhodos is hopefully going to take some good damage. Now, if that team was running high resistance and my Lysandra didn't reduce her turn meter, that could have been a bad situation. But this is a team that's very, very annoying. OK, if you just now grant there is a lot of outside information you have to know going into a fight like that. You have to know Siffy plus Rhodos is annoying. You have to know Siffy plus Rhodos basically means Rhodoses are not really going to be able to be CC'd. Um, but hey, if you know that, then you should be perfectly fine going against a team like that. Now, teams like this, where the Warlord is in the team, he can mess it up. Warlord is a champion who, honestly, don't even fight. Warlord's such an annoying champion. I'll be glad to get him, but until I get him, I think we're just going to skip him. A team like this, okay? This one is probably going to be pretty well speed tuned, okay? So you have Arbiter plus Siffy. This Trenda doesn't have to be. She can be fairly slow and still be perfectly speed tuned. And that's going to kind of be an issue, okay? So with Kaimar, you know, there's typically going to be a pretty big gap. A lot of times what people do with Kaimar is they'll have Siffy, Kaimar, Arbiter, Kaimar, whatever it is. They'll go, Kaimar will sleep, and ideally, Kaimar's speed, let's say it's 300, okay? Well, you know the enemy is going to be slept for a turn anyways. You're going to sleep their speed booster, all that kind of stuff. So then you can run your DPS champion at like 200 or less speed. You have that big speed gap. That's where Rio fits in perfectly. Whereas a team like this with two speed boosters plus a Hegemon who's probably reducing turn meter on his a, with his A1 anyways, this probably is not going to work out too well. But I will throw Molly in here to give me some extra turn meter. We'll keep Lysandra, reduce our turn meter. Hopefully this Hedgie's, well... If he's a nuke hedge, it's okay. We have shield set Molly. She'll uh, take some damage, but he's probably going to do his A1. Okay, he didn't do his A1. Perfect. So it's a CC hedgy. You can see all these um, crowd control abilities placed. Rio's going to cleanse. The Sandra's going to reduce her turn meter. Obviously, the enemy wasn't super fast, not super high resistance. Perfect. Molly comes in here with two provokes on Siffy, which is so good. That's another thing, guys. Molly is so worth it. Going for life tokens, I think. Such a such a good champion. Now, unfortunately, Rio is not, or unfortunately, Lysandra is not Kaimar. So we don't get that reset, that clutch, clutch reset that makes this so much easier. Not a huge deal, though, because we can cycle back around through everything. The reset would allow Molly to provoke, allow Magnar to hit again. That's just going to show how overpowered Kaimar is in the arena. Or at least how his kit just works out so perfectly. But what I want to do here is I'm probably going to have to kill Siffy, um, I guess. I want to get rid of Trenda. She's a real threat here, but I don't know if I can cycle around to do that very easily or not. So let's see. I don't really want to weak hit her, but I guess we just have to. I have to YOLO it. Even if we weak hit, we kill her. Um, hopefully Molly can get back around to provoke. If not, it's going to be kind of a weird situation. I don't want a bunch of reses going off. We don't have any real strips. This should work out fine, though, to be honest. The main thing here was just showing you guys the uh, turn meter manipulation stuff that happens. Um, this Hedgy was in a taunting set. The Molly comes back, or the Trenda comes back. We provoke the Trenda, perfect. At least stall a little bit longer. Once Magnar's A2 ability comes back up off cooldown, we should be okay. So we get some turn meter boosting going here. Got one more turn with no. Arbiter's res is probably gonna be off cooldown very soon. So I wanna go ahead and get rid of her. And I wanna kill this Trenda. This Trenda is really my only threat. If she if she gets a hit, I may be dead. Magnar is not very good against Trenda, obviously, because he's spirit affinity, right? So we'll go ahead and mitigate that threat. We should be good here. Magnar A2, easy cleanup. Obviously, this match is quite a bit longer than I expected, but this is just giving you an example of, hey, if you didn't have Rio, you probably wouldn't even attack this Hegemon team unless you had a full team of immunity. But not having a full team of immunity gear, you can go against a team like this who, before, you may not even stood a chance against, all right? So Rio definitely opens up a lot. She's a built-in immunity set. So, so very good. Teams like this, Kaimar plus Warlord, you can you can chance them, but most of the time, the Warlord's fast, the Kaimar's fast, and it's just it's not fun. Nobody likes playing against the Warlord, right? Nobody likes it. So let's go through this again. Another good example right here. Um, Kaimar in the team with Siffy, and Solus is probably going to be pretty far out of speed tune. So here, it's only one crowd control champion, unless Solus is really fast and he's going to provoke. I could throw it in an Arbiter. I could even throw in a Leorus, because my Leorus has more HP than Rio, which I'm not bringing Necrit, so that doesn't really even matter. Um, also, Leorus is not going to take any provoke from Solus. I'll throw in a Madame Saris here, and this hopefully will be perfectly fine. Now, this is kind of banking on the fact that hopefully I can boost more than that Siffy boosts. I may not actually do that, but let's see. So, kind of a risky play, not going to lie. 
kind of a risky play. Uh, Lysandra definitely makes the speed tuning a little bit easier on this because she reduces her turn meter plus boosts mine. So she may, may have made this easier. Kaimar for sure would have made this easier. I wish Leoris would have went right after Madam Saris. If he would have done that, I may have been able to beat this team. But let's try this one more time, okay? So going to refill some gems. It's kind of a chill thing right here. I'm just going to go through a few matches. If you're here, awesome. If you're still here throughout this much of the video, don't forget to drop a like, subscribe to the channel, and leave a comment down below if you're using Rio in any interesting way. Uh, let's go ahead and throw in, well, I, honestly, I could even do a Lysandra plus Arbiter. That could actually work out perfectly fine as well. I could do Lysandra, uh, Lysandra by herself. doesn't really matter. I do want to throw in Madame Saris, some kind of strip champion, because having Necrit plus Siffy, those buffs, there's too much to have to fight around. This is a pretty tanky team to have like this, okay? You gotta keep that in mind. It's definitely a tanky team for sure. So here, we reduce our turn meter. Should put us in a better situation. Unfortunately, Lior's Cycle of Revenge, he is all kinds of out of speed tune here. Um, we'll go ahead and hit him once. Not the best situation. Let's go ahead. Let's let's try to stop messing things up with Lior's. I might have to put in um, Magnar probably. Okay, we're actually doing all right. So let's uh, sleep, stun the uh, Siffy. Get back around to Lior's. Okay, here we go. Maybe he kills people. Okay, not not hitting quite as hard as I would like him to. He's not at zero HP. At zero HP, he can clap. He is super strong, but he needs to be at zero HP, right? So he's chunking the Solus for sure. He's down. Kaimar's down, okay? He just needs to be lower HP. Leoris is definitely a very good champion. I just recently pulled him as well. He's not booked or anything yet, but definitely a very good option. Uh, let's go ahead and refresh this again. I want to try to find a different kind of setup. Um, this team works too. Teams like this, you got to be a little bit careful because while it is the hedgy going first, you could do the same rio comp you just got to be mindful this is going to be a high resistance team probably we have resistance leader duchess probably a fairly high uh, rotos as well so let's say we don't really need a kaimar here um per se we don't need a speed aura we could throw in an attack aura if i had one i don't think i do um this is only for faction crypts unfortunately but let's see all right let's try to get something mixed up just a little bit um we could, do, we could do Arbiter. Arbiter would per work perfectly fine. We could do Lady Kimmy in here for some extra accuracy before... I think she's speed-tuned as well with this team. Yoshi. Yoshi is another champion who I was wanting to build. Honestly, he could go here against this kind of team, boost my accuracy of everybody, and then basically allow me to have increased attack, increased accuracy, allow Madam to strip bigger um, or higher resistance teams, and then have like a Magnar nuke or something like that. Well... Not necessarily Magnar, Herndig, who could benefit from the increased attack, right? Uh, but let's throw a Magnar in here as well. I'm really starting to like this champion. Uh, Magnar is definitely a very, very solid champion. Unfortunately, we have the Magic Affinity dude there, so it is what it is. Honestly, I'm trying to mix this up and not go with the Kaimar, but I guess we just have to go with the Kaimar. Has to be Kaimar all the time. Now, Lady Kimmy may be faster than maybe out of speed tune. Yep, I figured she was. She may have Cycle of Revenge. The, uh, the closeness and speed may have screwed her up. Either way, it's something to keep in mind. Probably going to get resisted there. I definitely need to go fix her t speed. This is why it's so important. You want the people to be so close in speed, but you also have to be very careful. Because if you don't have the speed tuned correctly, you're just going to screw yourself over. Um, I should be okay. Yeah, just kidding. I should not be okay. I'm actually going to be ruined from this match. So I guess we keep some of the wins, keep some of the losses in this video. We're going to go ahead and decrease the speed of everybody. Hopefully get another turn to nuke. Um... Without, maybe Kaimar's going to die though. Maybe not. We'll see. Magnar does get another nuke though. So we will get to see that happen. Unfortunately, everybody's blocking the debuffs anyways. Waiting for a turn. Come on there, Magnar. Let's take a turn, buddy. Boom and boom. Okay, so there we go. Now, if we survive this perfect, Rotos may go ham. Just kidding. Maybe we get Okay, so the increased accuracy probably helped there. Um, the increased accuracy from Lady Kimmy. I got a feeling that Rio would not have placed the stun on Rodos had that increased accuracy not been there. Definitely worked out good. Was a little bit sketchy. This is a team right here as well that I was practicing on quite a bit yesterday. Honestly, this person probably see me hit them a lot and they're probably annoyed by it. But this team right here, I'm going to go two more teams and then we're going to end this video. Okay, 24 minutes. Hopefully you guys are getting somewhat of an idea. Basically, what I'm doing um, is against this team, uh, Kaimar, okay? So I know, all right, if Kaimar's in there, 
I'm gonna get hit once, okay? I don't have to really worry about any other crowd control effects. Up until Solus, Solus does do a provoke. But if I throw in Molly, that's gonna give me enough speed to hopefully cut in line in the speed tuning, okay? Now in first place, I could have anybody who's gonna allow me to catch up to them in speed, okay? So I got her boosting my speed, and I really wanna make sure I go before that Solus goes. Now, I could throw Kaimark for the strip and the reset. Obviously, he's the best option, okay? He is so good in the lead. Increased speed, A2 ability with a strip. So, so good. Plus a sleep. I could throw in a Lissandra. She's going to reduce their turn meter. She's going to boost my turn meter, getting me closer to the enemy. And granted, I'm not going to strip. It's going to make this team super difficult if I have no strip. I could not put Molly in here. I could do Madame Saris. Madame Saris has the benefit of stripping, but I'd be solely relying on Lissandra to get me back into to the correct turn order okay let's give this a shot this may not work out very good but with magnar even if the madam saris takes a turn it's not gonna matter magnar is just gonna nuke anyways because he's hp based that's an example right there solus didn't even care the speed didn't matter whatsoever but if i throw molly in here let's see if molly can give us the oomph needed to cut in line against this kaimar and he may not the solus may be pretty well speed tuned Typically, these kinds of teams aren't. Lysandra had the wrong ability on her. Unfortunately, I guess she has Cycle of Revenge. Perfect example of why you don't want to have Cycle of Revenge on your champions. And Lysandra, I think I'm going to have to remove that from you, chick. Let's see. Do, do, do. Let's see, let's see, let's see. And she has Cycle of Revenge. This is the culprit, and this is what will screw you out of so many wins, okay? So we're going to drop her. We're going to take it back with Kaimar. So I'm going to take it off Lysandra. I'm going to have to say, well, I'm going to leave it on Leoris. I just have to make sure Madam Saris is speed tuned around Leoris if I want to run that. But this should be perfectly fine, okay? We strip, ideally remove it from everybody, okay? Molly provokes, Magnar does his thing, Kaimar resets, rinse and repeat. Obviously, Kaimar really, really shines right there. But on the lower ends of Arena, you can definitely use those other team comps. This one right here, okay? This one re would require you to have either an immunity Rio or bring in a Necrit, okay? And you could still use Lysandra because this team is going to be annoying, but I don't know how well they're going to be speed tuned. Maybe they are, maybe they're not. Tormens can hit pretty hard. But let's see. We can bring in a Lysandra or we could do uh, Leoris plus Arbiter. That could probably work decent as well. I prefer Lysandra, but this is a team... Honestly, I'd say more people have, but we have Necrit in here, so maybe you don't have him. Maybe you do. Maybe you have Necrit plus Rio. That's awesome, if so. These two champions are great together. Um, the speed gap between this is not very good, for sure. But we don't have to worry about provokes coming from Tormund or freezes on Leoris because he's not going to take any not going to take any CCs because he's immune. At least while he has the uh, his A2, I think. Not on cooldown, right? Still learning how he works. Uh, this, what did I say? Instantly, okay, so this champion is immune to stun, freeze, sleep, all that kind of stuff when this skill is not on cooldown. So we'll go ahead and hit with his A3 ability so he doesn't get no cooldowns placed. Um, then we'll hopefully cycle back around. It's done everything on this Arbiter. And then we pretty much wrap it up here, right? Why did he proc Swift Parry just now? Did he take damage from something? It's kind of weird. Oh, maybe from the, I don't know. Why did he take damage? It's a mystery to me. Maybe he already had Swift Parry proc. I just didn't notice it. All right, Leoris, do your thing, dude. Let's see it. Ah, I was hoping it would kill him. Dang it. Not a big deal. So Leoris, hit, Leoris hits pretty hard, right? It's obvious. Leoris is actually a pretty good champion. Now, I don't know how good he is on offense, like regularly. This is my first time really using him. But Rio, very, very good champion. She, hopefully, this, guy's, this gives you a good example of what she can do. I tried pushing up into plat. Try some of these other teams. This kind of team is probably what you're going to see more often than not, okay? This will be a pretty basic team setup. The Sandra, let's go, let's do this, okay? Well, take it back. Let's not do that. We could do this. Uh, Molly plus the Sandra or Arbiter doesn't really matter. Now, that's assuming the Hedgy does A2. If it does A1, it's going to mess us up. We'll use Lysandra to hopefully get back in the speed tune. This is going to be a hard team to speed tune because what you're seeing here is an Arbiter boosting all the way into an Astralon. It's a pretty far gap to clear. This team right here, we're not going to have any cleanses, unfortunately. It's going to be unfortunate. I'm going to bring Leoris because, well, actually, let's bring Magnar. Leoris does have benefits not getting stunned by Astralon. We don't have increased attack from Arbiter. There's, there's, there's several different options you can bring. I could bring Arbiter plus Leoris. I could bring... 
Lysandra plus Magnar, doesn't really matter. Attack based Nuker or HP based Nuker. We'll bring Magnar, not great against Ashalon. The main thing here is to see, okay, if the Hedgy uses A2, is Molly going to boost enough to, okay, uses A1 ability. I don't know what I figured he would do, to be honest. Um, the stun didn't really matter. Luckily, the A1 didn't place anything on Rio. Had it placed something on Rio, kind of would have messed me up. Now here, you're going to be able to see the nice little heal that comes out from Rio when she does her cleanse. Hopefully, we can get the, some of the term meter back. But against these Hegemons, you kind of got to expect that they could possibly use their A1 ability, which essentially reduces the term meter, has a chance of placing decreased speed. And it's overall a pretty annoying thing to have happen, but it is a pretty frequent occurrence, okay? A1, A2, very, it changes, the, changes what you're going to do quite a bit, but you can't really know what they're going to do until you jump into the match. You can kind of have an idea based on their team setup, but you'll never know 100% for sure. I'm going to YOLO, hope that decreases term meter there. Uh, we're not going to do that just yet. We're going to go ahead and res Rio, turn on auto, cross our fingers, and hope we win. All right. So Magnar, he's going to smack. He's not going to get a weak hit. It's going to be GG. There we go. No weak hit. That's the thing that's rough is when you're running against magic nukers who hit so hard, and Magnar is a spirit affinity, is getting those weak hits. All right, guys. So we're 31 minutes into the video. Hopefully, this video helped you out. Hopefully, this video is a decent breakdown on how you can use your Rio if you haven't used her already. Hopefully this shows you some of the different options you can use in teams. You could even use a Gore Grab. You could even use um, Basher. Basher is another very good option. Any champion who has a speed lead, a champion who can manipulate a turn meter, manipulate the abilities, Basher, Warlord, anything like that. And then a nuke champion like Magnar works perfectly fine. So you got a few different options, tons of different champions who can fit those roles. Obviously you need Rio, not a, a real replacement for Rio. But let me know what you guys think. If you guys want a different video showing more teams, let me know. I can try to show that. If I didn't show enough, definitely let me know. But either way, guys, thank you all very much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed. I got some losses on defense. It is what it is. But I'll catch you guys in the next video.